Hi, in this video we're going to take a look at this interesting power supply. So this was sent to me by Banggood and I have to confess I was a little bit confused originally when this turned up because it's not 100% clear what this is. So let's take a little look at the Banggood website first of all and here you can see it's a relatively expensive device so it's coming in at $194. Don't forget you can always get discount codes at Banggood um, so don't always pay full price. You can almost always get anywhere between 10 and 20% off. Um, but this was slightly confusing because it kind of gave the impression that maybe this thing was a portable power supply that had a lithium battery and that kind of thing. And then it mentions this 2.4 gigahertz wireless connection. And it all a little bit confusing. And even the description doesn't really make a great deal of sense exactly what this is for and what it's aimed at. So this is the MDP XP and you can put an input of between 4.2 and 30 volts into the power supply and the output is 30 volts at 5 amps or 90 watts. Now I think this is a buck type regulator inside the device so if you only put 12 volts in I think you can only get 12 volts out but we will check that um, and it's got extraordinarily low ripple and noise figures um, so it suggests that it's quite a high performance device but I'm always dubious a little bit of these kind of specifications uh, but at the price it does suggest that it is using some relatively high quality components inside. Now it's a two-part construction and basically you've got this display on the top and then the power module underneath and the idea is that you can buy additional power modules if you want to so these can be bought separately, again still quite expensive, $128, and you can have up to, I think it's four of these stacked up, connected to the display module, and uh, actually I think it's six that you can have, so it's got six on here. You can have them all connected wirelessly to the display module, so you can look at the current and voltage that's being drawn by the device and the setup of the power supply module itself. Now the 2.4 gigahertz is literally a 2.4 gigahertz connection between devices so it's not a Wi-Fi connection or anything like that. It's literally um, just a connection um, that allows these to communicate together. So there's a little bit of confusion there on the website. It's not 100% clear of that. But um, looking at the device, it's actually a really high quality build. It's um, an entirely metallic construction other than display itself. The display folds forward so you can read it um, when it's sat on the bench and then the power supply module itself is also quite slim. So you've got your power input here so it can take either a DC jack or a USB-C connector and then you've got your DC regulated outputs on the side here and you can control the current and voltage as you'd expect on a standard power supply. There's a little port here which says PROG and you can use this to update the firmware on this unit but also you can use it to provide power to the display module so this doesn't have any kind of internal battery or anything like that as you might think it might do but basically what it is is a portable power supply that you can uh, just power from a USB uh, power bank that kind of thing so these stack together and they are magnetically attached it doesn't quite withstand uh, going upside down but they locate together and then they are locked in together and then you get a few different power cables so we've got one here and this allows you to connect the display module to the power module and then if I just grab a USB-C lead you can plug this into the back if we turn it on you can see we get the serial number and the upload version and then the display comes on. Now also in the packaging you also get a couple of uh, connectors. So uh, it's got the banana jacks on the side. You can plug your leads into there. And then you've got some crocodile clips that you can attach to. And these actually look like uh, they are coated copper. They're not gold I don't think but they, uh, they do look like they've got some kind of coating on there to stop in the oxidation. Um, but that's the presentation basically so let's have a little closer look at its operation and how it works. Right so we've got a few different ways to control this power supply. First of all you can use the power supply on its own individually so if we take a little look at the bottom here we can set the voltage 
um, easily by going up to where well, you press set and that switches between current and voltage. So you can set the voltage to whatever you want. First of all, you've got quite fine control just by using the scroll wheel. But if we press the set button at the same time, then we've got uh, much more coarse control that allows you to more quickly set the voltage. Also, there's another method of setting the voltage. So if we hold down the set button and press the button next to it, uh, menu, you've got some preset voltages that we can pick. So we can go to the uh, 4.2 volt setting, for example, and it's already preset with a one amp current limit. And if we press the set button, it uh, pre-selects that on the display. And then we can turn on the output by clicking the run button. And I've got a 39 ohm resistor connected. And you can see we're dissipating about half a watt into that. Now if we turn it back off again and go to the current setting, we can try it in constant current mode. So we're currently set to 10 milliamps. And if we turn it on now, you can see we're controlling to 10 milliamps. And because we've got the 39 ohm resistor connected, we're only putting uh, 0.39 volts into it. So that's basically how you can use uh, this device. There are a few other bits and bobs. So you can, um, you can display the incoming voltage by pressing the menu. You can display the input current as it's currently using it at the moment. Maximum limit, so you can set a limit so that you don't overload your power bank or anything like that. And then you've got the internal temperature and finally, uh, some of the IDs and information about the firmware. Then if we take a look at the top of the device, we've got slightly more simple control of the power supply because we've got a few more buttons that we can use. So uh, we've got a oscilloscope type function. And then if we want to set the current and the voltage, we press the modified button. And you can see it's highlighted the voltage at the moment. So we press next. And here, we can set the voltage and you can use the menu wheel to choose which digit we're going to change. So we can change this to 5 volts and then uh, click modify and then basically to turn on the unit you still have to press the run lock button on the front of the power supply here. So here we're turning on the output and we've still got the constant current mode engaged and it's saying constant current on here. And on the graph here, we're just displaying basically the voltage. So fairly rudimentary control. And um, we can just set the current. I think we can set all of this live as well. So if we press the next button, uh, we can actually want to press the back button, click modify. And then we want to choose the current. We can press next. And we can start increasing that. And that allows live control of the current and voltage control. Now if I disconnect the load, because I don't want to overload that resistor, we can actually increase the output above the incoming voltage. So it does have a book boost controller. So uh, you can see that we've got the input set to 11 volts. And if we click next here, and we pick this range here, we can go all the way up to 30 volts. And it's suggesting that it's actually reading 29.997 volts. So we can output a voltage higher than the incoming voltage. And what we'll do now is just have a little look at how accurate the voltages are. Right, so I've just set up the multimeters. And you can see on the right hand side, we're reading a voltage and on the left hand side, we are reading current. So the output is turned on, and we've got this set to 10 millivolts and you can see on the meter on the right hand side we're actually reading 9.76 millivolts so that's uh, pretty close to the set point that's really quite good let's increase the voltage so we'll try it at uh, about 3 volts that's 3.01 volts and it'll just take a little bit of time to settle I've got the six and a half digit meter on uh, the longest integration time and there we're reading 3.010 volts. So that's pretty much spot on. That's about as good as you can ask for. Let's take it up to 12 volts, which is just on the threshold between uh, book and boost, presumably depending on the topology that they're using in here. 
um, and we can just see that we're reading at 12.010 and on the multimeter 12.012. So just very slightly off there on the third decimal place. Let's take it up all the way to 30 volts. So we're set to 30 volts there. Normally just takes a moment to settle. And there we're reading 30.005 volts. So just a slight offset there on the third decimal place. That's about as close as you could ask for. Let's apply some load to the output. So that's about 100 milliamps. And you can see on the left-hand meter, we're reading 99.23 milliamps. So again, almost spot on. Let's increase the current a bit further. And that should be about 300 milliamps. And again, we're reading 2.9, no, 299 milliamps there. So just very slightly off. And the voltage is still spot on. So we're still reading 30.003 volts. So relatively good just getting a little bit of noise on the graphing display uh, but that looks relatively stable on the multimeter those numbers aren't floating around very much let's change the voltage and so we're set to 12 volts and we should be drawing about 800 milliamps um, and that's 799 milliamps so pretty much just that last decimal place is just off slightly and we're still pretty much there with the voltage, so 11.990 volts. We have got some uh, losses in the cables connected to the power supply, so uh, I would expect that voltage to drop very slightly. Right, so we've got the scope set up for AC coupling at 20 millivolts per division. And this is sort of the background noise that we're getting. So it's picking up quite a lot of background noise uh, from the lab. If I uh, change the time base, you can see we're just picking up 50 hertz on the probes. If I then connect it up to the power supply, we can see um, basically we can see some 50 hertz superimposed on it, but it's pretty low in amp amplitude, and we're just seeing a little bit of noise here. So let's turn on the power supply, and you can see here that looks pretty much the same. So we're just sort of seeing uh, what does it say we're about. Um, somewhere in the region of 45 millivolts noise peak to peak. Let's apply a 39 ohm load to this. And that noise goes down further. So we're now at about 39 millivolts peak to peak noise. So that's relatively clean. Uh, we are getting some noise coming through from the power bank as well, because that has a DC to DC converter. Uh, I'm not sure what the specs of the power supply rejection on this unit are. So I'm not sure how much of this is being picked up just from the power supply itself or whether it's being generated by the DC to DC converter in the unit. But I would say that looks pretty clean. I mean, I've seen significantly worse bench power supplies, um, you know, that create much noisier outputs, even uh, quite expensive devices. So the noise performance on this is pretty good. Right, so I've just enabled the FFT mode on the Rigol, and you can see here in the kind of switching frequencies that we're expecting, so we're seeing 1 kilohertz up to around a megahertz, and we're seeing absolutely sod all in terms of noise. So this is our 0 dB, and if we go all the way down to here, this is about minus 80, minus 60, and, you know, that's really, really good performance. So uh, really quite impressive uh, noise specs on the output of this power supply. Right, so I think that's about all we're going to look at with this power supply. I think we've seen enough to determine that it does behave very well as a power supply. Um, in terms of the accuracy, it's pretty much spot on. And you'd have to spend quite a lot of money on a bench power supply to get this level of accuracy and that noise performance. The main query for me really is who's going to buy this thing? Because if you're going to be using it on your bench, it's just way too fiddly to uh, make quick settings. The beautiful thing about a bench power supply is you've got the row of knobs on the front and you can quickly set all the voltages and currents and quickly change them if something's going wrong. With this you've got to go into the menus and you've got to play with the rotary encoder and it's just not quite as quick and responsive if you need to change some settings quite quickly. Obviously if you're only using it for powering your Arduino boards or that kind of thing uh, then the presets that are on here are kind of quite handy so you can quickly go to these go to a standard setting so you know 5 volts 
at 2 amps, you know you're going to be using that for your logic circuits and that's there so you know you can set that pretty quickly but let's say you wanted to uh, drive some LEDs without using a driver, you just want to change the current, you then got to go in and start faffing around with this and you know it's just not quite as quick and intuitive as you'd like and then the display module itself is even more fiddly I think so this is uh, you know quite quick at setting things it doesn't quite get you there so you do have to scroll through um, you know to fine-tune it but this is a little bit more fiddly so you know you click modify then you have to go through and choose the setting that you want to change click next and then the annoying thing with this that I've noticed is you can be changing the value and then it will randomly accept it and go back um, to the setting screen so uh, the timeout does actually seem to be relatively long but I've been caught out quite a few times where it's just randomly gone okay and then just gone back and um, you know you have to enter the menu again to change the setting further but it is quite nice the way that you can control six power supplies all in a stack it, obviously the setup would be getting quite expensive at that point the graphing function is rather limited it, I think there are firmware updates available for this so things are being developed uh, you know in time but uh, it doesn't have enough memory depth to show you anything that useful on here so I'm not really too sure um, you know why you'd want to have the graphing function you can get a little bit more detail on here so when you've got all six channels up you've got a lot more available to view at the same time and I can see that screen being quite useful um, but really you'd have to be using this somewhere where you need this portable form factor if you were going to buy this device. So if you're doing work in the field and you've got a battery power bank then obviously it makes complete sense. If you're using this on the bench you'd probably opt for something more suited where you've got your knobs on the front and you can quickly set all of the settings. Now one thing that would be really nice and would have changed my mind about this device is if this was a touchscreen and you could quickly uh, just go back and you know you could press on here and it would bring up your settings you can change the voltage with some up and down buttons that would make a lot more sense it's just these rotary encoders are just a little bit too fiddly in my opinion but uh, you can make your own mind up about this it's um, the power supply module itself is quite nice so I do quite like the power supply module I'm just not quite sure uh, you know about the overall setup and it does behave very well we saw some really good noise performance um, you know it's just uh, yeah, I'll leave it up to you to make your mind up. You can have a look at the Banggood website. I'll put the links down below so you can take a look and see what you think. Uh, but for me, it's just a little bit too pricey and a little bit too fiddly to use. So hopefully you found this video useful and interesting. Uh, leave your comments down below and your thoughts. If you've got any further tests that you want me to do on this because you are thinking about buying one of these, then obviously uh, ask the questions down in the comments and I'll do a little follow-up video um, to uh, address those questions. So, hopefully you enjoyed the video, and until next time, thanks for watching.